Right, so today we're looking at fish from Lake Tanganyika. Now within this tank there are quite a few Tanganyikan species and then there are two species from Lake Malawi because I just can't help myself. It's always good to throw that one or two species of colour or uh, unique body shape in. Now talking about Lake Tanganyikan fish, obviously their water parameters are slightly more alkaline and have a higher pH than Lake Malawi. Although I think after years and years within the, the ornamental market, their adaptability has come down. So I think as long as you are buffering your tank water, which means you're not just relying on coral sand, because I really don't think that that works. We've run quite a few experiments and taken into account the slow absorption as well as the high water change regime, you never really get it to where it is and therefore you never get that really um, beautiful manifestation of colouring. So we always buffer our water, which means we raise the pH and we raise the alkalinity. Now one of the biggest things that people struggle with is having to test their water. So we get these in for our customers, they water test strips, they are a five test strip unit. So the top one is total hardness, then we've got nitrate, nitrite, carbonate hardness and then the pH. So you basically just dip it into the water, remove it, wait 60 seconds and then compare it to the colour coding. So nice and easy. And what we found is the colour manifestation is much better, the, um, the digestive tracts of the fish, the cellular processes are all based on the pH and the alkalinity which provides the osmotic balance for the cells. You know, it's all, uh, those are all contributing factors on how the animal heals, grows new tissue and looks after itself. And that goes a long way to having success with them. Now I do know a lot of people really struggle with species like the um, Trophius. A lot of them develop internal flagellates and because they can't specifically aggressive, i.e. they're very aggressive to anyone that looks exactly like them. And I think that's down to a level of territoriality because they feed in a very specific way. They, they live in the shallow waters, lots of current, highly oxygenated, so they're the first type of fish that struggle when the pumps go off. But what they also do is they tend a patch of garden and that's why they're highly territorial for a specific land-based area. And that's why you see such high levels of aggression. Now a lot of people say they're only vegetarian and I think this is really wrong. I think they take up high amounts of protein, crustacea and vertebrates in the algae as they feed on it because they're scraping it all into their dig digestive tract. But with um, fish meal based foods I think it becomes a little bit of an issue because that sits in the gut and then the high level of territoriality induces the low immune system or the fish that's getting stressed and that's why you see the explosion of internal flagellates. Now one of the tips that we do is we run our tank systems on a lot lower temperature than what most people do and invariably on the social media I always see like around summertime everyone's complaining that they're losing their trophies, they're having really um, large issues and I think it's a temperature related thing you know as the metabolism increases so say you've got your temp set at 25 degrees comes to summertime that daytime temperature goes all the way up to 27 28 degrees now what happens is the metabolism increases therefore the desire for resources is that much more um, increased so they have to fend off at a much higher rate any competition for food because they're hungry and therefore they've got to break that they, they use a lot more food and that's why we see an increase in aggression in that time period and I think people would do a lot better with their fish if they were running so winter time we run our tanks at 22 23 degrees at a maximum and then summertime we raise the temp up to 24 degrees so that in our daytime peaks we have 25 26 and that's an absolute maximum you know I, I it's you don't have to have the temp as high as 27 28 degrees it's just a waste of electricity um, and puts pressure on the entire system you know it makes them have to feed at a much higher rate uh, I hope that this video has all made sense we've covered the buffering of the water and we will cover that with a subsequent video explaining exactly how we do it so we just make our own um, batch up and then we've discussed about running slightly lower temperatures hope you enjoyed